Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are Aqui and Jay. Hi. Hi, Dennis. Thanks for having us. Nice to have you here. And LD Kid. Hi. Hey, Dennis. How's it going? Uh, great, great. So glad to have you both here to talk about uh, Enough, a celebration of black joy and expression. Did yes. I get the Absolutely. title right? Yes. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Which is uh, coming up at Mirabox Theater on the 22nd of June. Um, so uh, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll, obviously, that's why we're here. But... I happen to, I've known both of you for a long time, and I know that you have known each other for a really long time. Your friendship dates back to high school, yeah? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the word really in the way you emphasize it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, high school, yeah. Uh, and that was at Washington. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so did you, so so you were obviously acquainted. I'm guessing you maybe got, you know, you maybe got involved in the same, some of the same artistic type of stuff. Not you at know, all. No, yeah, no, no, not no, not in okay. high school. Yeah, okay. yeah it was yeah. it was sports in high school for the most part for okay. you, like swimming. I was only swimming and and like literary press, and then I and I mostly kept to myself socially. And LC. and yeah, I was just involved in a little bit of everything and was not keeping to myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you knew each other. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you and Aqua, you say you kind of kept to yourself. Uh, but was, you know, was it, was LD a friend? Was that somebody you hung out with or not really? I don't think, yeah. no, we wouldn't yeah. say that. We, I mean, we knew each other. I think we just generally were friendly when we crossed paths, but we didn't really hang out. We didn't really, uh, we didn't have a friendship in high school. We just, yeah, just I, parallel lives, yeah. very parallel lives. Very parallel. Um, I was so involved in, you know, show choir and choir. I, I rarely hung out with the people I played sports with because uh, kind of the arts for me really took up a majority of my time. And so those were the people that I found myself constantly hanging out with. I knew that there were always these get togethers of all the sports teams, but I typically wasn't at that because I was doing something with all the people that were a part of the choir. Well, and of course the theater choir band, they are, you know, those, those become social groups, Mm -hmm. but you know, Aqui, I first, you know, I first kind of became aware of you as, you know, as a writer Yeah, and so that is definitely, you know, the the writer kids in high school yes. definitely kind of kept to themselves a little their bit. Oh, yeah. Their yeah. own species. <laughs> Very much. Yeah. And I, I just remember what I remember most about LD was that he was a football player, you know, so there there is... Um, very much. I didn't even remember the show choir part until much later. But yeah, so language arts, um, the literary press, and just, you know, we were a small group of kids who were really quiet. I mean, people would find that hard to believe now, I think, at this point, but super <laughs> quiet and just really kept to ourselves. We were much happier reading books and writing poetry. But since then, both of you have had, you know, crazy busy yeah. artistic careers. I was kind of I was kind of going down the list, you know, you know, writer, artist, musician, singer, performer, choreographer, um, you know, and and there's just two of you in the room. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So when did you, when did you, so you were friendly, you knew each other, Mm -hmm. but now, but now fast forward to uh, getting together and deciding you wanted to, you know, work together collaboratively in, uh, in your artistic. So how did that come about? Yeah, I think at one point our artistic journeys started to sort of intersect in in still sort of tangential ways. So like the academy, I think of the academy trip. Um, yes, I was so taking this, a, is, this is the academy for, for the SPS. Yep. 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 So this was, again, years ago, um, and we still hadn't really kept track of each other artistically, <laughs> but I was taking kids to D.C. Okay. I Sorry, were you both, were you, was that program... Had Ruth founded that program when you were in high school, or did you come into it more as adult mentors? She had founded it, and by this point, I was the assistant executive or assistant director okay. to the program. Okay. So, um, and I was not involved with SPS at all at, at that point in time. I actually didn't know too much about it yeah. until this weird encounter where. Aqui had posted on social media that she was going to be in D.C. and she was bringing a group of students to a show in Rockville, Maryland. And I was like, are you coming to the show that I'm performing in? (laughs) It was like it was really, really random because at that point in time, I was dancing for uh, Hellenius J. Wilkins and his uh, uh, modern dance company that was uh, primarily all male, um, mostly African-American dance company uh, called Edgeworks Dance Theater that I had witnessed a performance of at CSPS here and had this conversation and the talk back with Hellenius afterwards. And I was like, how do I join your company? And so I went out to DC, I auditioned and I was in this production. And it was this really weird thing where I was typically going out for about a week at a time. And that would always culminate in some type of performance. So I wasn't living there. I was still here. 
And all of a sudden, Aqui is there with a group of students. So And suddenly, yeah. So LD and I suddenly our paths crossed again after high school in that particular moment. And really from there, then we would just collaborate. I think other artists, other producers would bring us in together, mm -hmm. film. So um, like one film project. That's had, right. You guys did a film. Yeah. yeah. Me doing voiceover. And this was um, like Josh Booth back in those days. So I do voiceover and write script and then LD would do choreography. So we did a few of those for like women lead change mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Yep. Um, so it's slow, slowly gravitated into more and more work together. Yeah. And at one point in time, you had the hook that was mm -hmm. happening pretty consistently. Yeah. I had always kind of dabbled in writing poetry, but it was never something that I, you know, took all that serious. And there was a moment where um, I think maybe through SPT at some point yeah. in time that I did something with them. And then you were like, well, I have this thing. So would you be interested? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to like perform my poetry in front of people. And so that kind of also kind of fostered the collaborative nature of what we're able to do now. So not surprising in Cedar Rapids, you know, creative people kind of, you know, zig and zag yeah. in and uh, in into and out of each other's projects. So not at all surprising that you would find yourselves working together. Mm -hmm. But this Enough project, which is which is uh, the project you're doing this week, is kind of the first in kind of your new effort organization company. What are you what are you calling it? A creative collective. I like this. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just um, an opportunity for us to more formally and intentionally and strategically as we move forward, collaborate in really specific ways. Okay, well, that leads us to uh, this weekend's uh, performance. It's going to involve the two of you and Alicia Monet and... Um, EJ, EJ Suave. EJ, yep. yeah. Oh, EJ, e EJ, LD... All the initials. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> Aqui's last name kind of sounds yeah, like yeah. initials. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so tell me about uh, about this project. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, if you haven't already, I would highly recommend taking opportunity on any of the streaming services, listening to Aqui's album "Enough" uh, that she produced last year, and this was your first attempt at like recording your poetry in this album form yes. and uh she was able to collaborate with uh lyrical tmg based out of waterloo and he created all these beats for it it's a phenomenal 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 album and so um this grant through the iowa arts council uh was basically an extension of that project turning this into a live performance and when aqui approached me about this i was just like ideas you know co come flooding into my mind and i'm like okay we could do this we could do yeah. this here are the people we could collaborate with let's strip it down and make it so it's so different from the album that it gives us the ability to then if we want to take it to mm -hmm. another level at at any given time so uh, this performance is really stripped back nothing is amplified uh, which is a really intimate way of doing this project yeah so just piggybacking off of that with the album I mean, receiving the grant and thinking through how I wanted to adapt the album content into the live performance, my first thought, I originally thought, all right, it'll just be me on stage. I'll get a band. Like, there we go. I've done that before, right? Um, with SPT Theater and Pojam. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I don't, I don't, that doesn't feel right. I want to do something different. I want to do it in a way that hasn't been done before that I haven't tried before. And so thinking through that process and generally just sort of randomly crossing paths with LD as I was thinking through this, vocalizing this project concept with LD and LD did what LD does when our, when we have these conversations, which is like you just said, he took the idea and he runs with it. And it's like, yes, okay. And, you know, we think differently creatively, our, our brains, our imaginations work in different, very different ways. But ultimately, um, I always appreciate that when we come together on a project, it's it's in the spirit of yes and, yes and. It's not necessarily, I have my idea of how this should look. He has his idea of how this should look and we've got to make a decision about one or the other. It's how does that yes and, yes and, yes and get us to this really cool thing that neither one of us would have necessarily created on our own. Exactly. Uh, and then, so tell me how uh, tell me how Alicia and EJ fall into this then. Again, LDs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was one of those things where we were uh, talking about people that we've worked with in the past. And again, it didn't feel it didn't feel like it was the right path for this journey mm -hmm. to do something that we've already done. And so I got the opportunity uh, to work with EJ. Uh, he was the drummer for um, 
Classic Edition, which is the show choir over at McKinley Middle School. So I got to know him a little bit more through that uh, uh, as the co-director of that program. And Alicia is somebody who I... For years and years and years, uh, I think probably since Follies at some point in time was like, I want to collaborate with you in some way, shape or form. And I don't know what that looks like. And I would, you know, send her ideas and she would always say, yeah, that's great. And then scheduling just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. So uh, Alicia and EJ are partners. So, you know, they're in a uh, relationship together. And so it felt right to have kind of this like quad approach to it, mm -hmm. this quartet look at very different you know, primary focuses of what our art is. Uh, EJ as a drummer and percussionist who is also a producer. Alicia, who is an amazing vocalist. Aqui as a spoken word artist and uh, visual artist with painting. And then me as the choreographer dancer. It felt like it was four very unique perspectives of a way to approach this whole project. And Alicia is somebody that LD and I, I think going all the way back to like 2016, 2017, maybe um, have just over the years talked about if we were to ever create a, a production for the stage and we wanted to incorporate vocals, who would that be? And Alicia's name has always, always been at yep. the top. Yeah. Uh, so then how has, so you've got, you know, four very diverse voices. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, the two of you are kind of uh, conceptualizing the form of this. Uh, as you worked the other two in, how did that all come together? Yeah, it was. It's so because you got. I guess, I'm guessing you got pretty four pretty strong personalities. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah, it's four four strong personalities, but everybody is just in this collaborative spirit. Mm -hmm. And LD can correct me, or I think the first few meetings, because um, LD and I have worked so closely together frequently enough, and I actually haven't worked with either EJ or Alicia, and so I think the first few meetings were all of us just trying to get a sense of what this dynamic and what this energy is like together and being very open to that. But Yeah, I 100% I agree with that. And it was also a getting to know one another. Like, yeah. I think the very first rehearsal and even the second rehearsal, the first 30 to 45 minutes was just kind of chatting, like yeah. getting to know one another, getting to know a little bit more history, uh, especially for Aqui having not worked with either one of them. And that felt very um, authentic to this specific process, uh, which we talked about the yes and concept, which comes from improv. Uh, and so we wanted to bring in improv and Aqui has referenced, you know, improvisation in jazz music so much where it's like somebody improvises their solo and we yes and whatever it is that they do. That solo can last as long as it needs to or it can be short, but we're yes ending it and trying to take the next section to, uh, you know, more of a climactic uh, place. Mm -hmm that we wouldn't be able to do on our own. Yeah, well, you're in the right place. You're in the right place talking <laughs> exactly. about improvisation here, definitely. Uh, Aqui, since, since this began with your album, mm -hmm. Enough, uh, what is, what's the biggest change yeah. that, you know, that you see as, it, as this performance is coming together? What's, what's the biggest uh, part that evolved? Yeah, so um, I've really been thinking through that quite a bit. And I would say that at the beginning of this process, I, I had to let go of some of that, this is the vision originally because it's a different experience in this live performance and the collaboration. I think the biggest changes, um, the first was that in the early meetings, we wanted to make sure that the themes in the in the script, in the words, somehow felt authentic to all of us, right? So we had conversations about, well, what does this mean to you? What does this mean to each of us so that we're creating a piece that's not just me and my voice and my ideas anymore, but it's the collective experience? So I think that was part of it is it's not, it's no longer my voice literally or figuratively it's have it's a cast of folks who've come together to think about what spirituality black creativity black identity looks and feels like to each of us as individuals and holistically um and then the other is the album i always imagined that i was it was a very intimate conversation between me and one other person who's listening and um and that and now it's really more in some ways, the conversation we're all having together with each other and then pulling in this larger audience, too. Uh, the show is enough. Uh, a celebration of black. Uh, shoot. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, joy. Black yeah. joy and experience. And I had to consult my notes. So people in the video, people in the video saw me consult my notes there. Black joy and uh, expression. Yeah. Black, oh, did I, what did I say? Experience? Yeah. Yeah. Black joy and expression. So, uh, but it is correct on. If you're watching the video, it is correct underneath our 
on our lower third right now. Yes. <laughs> so a celebration of black joy and expression. It's June 22nd at Mirrorbox Theater. 7.30 tickets through Mirrorbox. Yep. They're available online right now, so make sure that you get them. The seating is limited at Mirrorbox, right. yeah. so um, we definitely hope to sell out uh, within the next couple of days, so I would grab your tickets now. Uh, and um, also, not a coincidence, this is the week of Juneteenth, so that's uh, you know that, not a coincidence that it's happening this week as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it just sounds like uh, sounds like a fun and exciting project. Congratulations on getting this pulled together, <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what your next project is going to be too. Excellent. Thank, Thank you so much, Dennis. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 10:30, or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org/culture, or using your favorite podcast app. You can watch the videos on our Facebook or YouTube channels too. Our producer is Lydia Kilgore. I'm Dennis Green. I'll talk to you later.